Being arrested earlier this month in the Bahamas, cryptocurrency mogul Sam Bankman Freed faces multiple criminal fraud charges after losing his customers billions of dollars. Now, he is currently out of jail on a $250 million bond, but things continue to get worse for the FTX founder as both the former CEO of Alameda Research and his FTX co founder have agreed to plea deals and are cooperating with prosecutors. And joining us now to discuss is criminal defense attorney Michael Wayback, Zweiback, and he specializes in white collar crime and data security. Good morning, Michael. Thank you for being with us here. Um, we'll start, of course, with FTX founder Sam Bankford, uh, Bankford, Bankman Freed, if I could say it right, rested for cheating his crypto customers as well as losing a bunch of money. We're talking about $26 billion for himself as well. This kind of, if you will, came out of the blue for maybe those who weren't familiar with the cryptocurrency. Tell us more just kind of what happened here. Well, I, it, it really didn't come out of the blue from those that know the course of uh, federal criminal investigations. Once the announcement of the bankruptcy proceedings uh, was made back in November, the Southern District of New York federal prosecutors and the FBI started to investigate the matter. They uh, started to talk to witnesses and I believe probably started to talk to people around Mr. Bankman Freed who have ultimately now pled guilty. I expect more guilty pleas in the future. And so they started immediately trying to put this case together. And Bankman Freed is actually claiming ignorance and saying that he wasn't aware of what was going on between FTX and his training arm, Alameda Research, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, is that a realistic or viable defense in your estimation? No, you already have uh, two individuals who have stepped up to the podium in federal court who have said that they knew what was going on and they were in the inner circle of this fraud, uh, given the fact that two of his closest confidants have said that they knew exactly what was going on. Uh, I believe that the federal uh, prosecutor is going to be able to prove their case. And I expect that more people are going to step forward and are probably speaking with the federal prosecutors to reach deals as well. And we'll be able to prove that he actively knew what was going on. And what about if you were in charge of defending him? Would you just, as you mentioned, a couple of folks have already come out and, and, and gotten plea deals. Would this be something that you would say to him, hey, you know what, just take a deal yourself and avoid trial? Well, it certainly has to be something that uh, is going to be explored by his defense team. I mean, as the evidence mounts and sort of the overwhelming evidence of his knowledge and the amount of loss in this case, which are going to guide sentences, which are going to be astronomical, you have to start to think to yourself, is there a way that you can mitigate the risk? I mean, I don't believe he's going to mitigate the fact that he's going to be ultimately found guilty, but can you mitigate the risk and maybe assist in the investigation to find assets, do things that affirmatively help the prosecution, because certainly there are going to be others who are going to be charged and in some way create uh, some incentive on the part of prosecutors to recommend a, a much lower sentence. You know, you have some customers, of course, who are upset about this and even looking for litigation themselves, uh, even looking to maybe possibly sue folks like Tom Brady, Gwyneth Paltrow, Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, is that something that is viable? Is there some way for them to get some money back, recoup something uh, if they are able to sue? I know it's in Chapter 11 now. It's in Chapter 11, and those suits will be filed as part of the bankruptcy, and it's certainly a viable theory. I mean, these people vouched for the investment. Uh, they used their celebrity status to do so and incentivized people to uh, to invest in, in the fund. And they did likely very little in terms of betting, ultimately, the investment, and yet basically said, well, look at me, I'm invested, so be like me and invest uh, like everyone else. And that is viable for purposes of a fraud theory. Michael, you know, you, you're you looking at the how big this was when the cryptocurrency has really had a great, you know, five years, if you will, kind of coming, uh, folks are starting to invest, folks are wanting to learn more about it, it's big on social media. But then all of a sudden, last year or so, it, it's kind of taken a downturn. And then you have, obviously, like Ponzi schemes like this one. How much does this hurt cryptocurrencies growth it, it definitely uh, is going to significantly stymie the growth of crypto but it may actually uh, be the 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 savior of crypto in in a sense because what it's going to do is it's going to usher in some regulations that are going to protect the ordinary investor uh, when they decide to get into this very risky type of investment. So I expect to see a lot more regulation that in the short term 
is going to probably stunt the growth, but in the long term could probably help it. Yeah, as folks start to put more and more of their money in that, you've seen athletes say, hey, give me my entire you know, $5 million signing bonus. I want it all in cryptocurrency. I'm sure folks are going to want more regulation. Uh, Mr., of course, criminal defense attorney Michael Zweibach, we appreciate you. Happy holidays. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you.